Okay guys, welcome to a video. Uh, we're all kind of in the same mess together these days. Uh, I'm sitting here sort of in, my wife and I in kind of like isolation in our home, kind of really limited to outdoor social activities at least uh, from this COVID-19 thing. But you know, everybody's in the same boat. We're just gonna have to ride this out. But uh, one thing is I'm getting bored with uh, doing my normal routine around the house. So I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to do another YouTube. And uh, this YouTube is going to be a little different. It is a product review, but it's on a product that I normally wouldn't do a, a video on. I'm not, uh, I'm not accustomed to doing videos on this type of product. And the product is Double Edge Safety Razors. Now, I don't have a shaving channel and I don't plan on having one. Um, but I do have a collection of safety razors and I have come to a conclusion that there is one, one safety razor that I think stands out above all others. And I'm going to explain that to you a little bit and show you some of the razors that I've got. Hope, hope, hopefully you'll find this interesting. Uh, maybe you'll disagree or agree with my conclusion, but I'd appreciate it if you let me know in the comment. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so this all started for me uh, years ago. A few years back now when I purchased a razor called the MicroTouch One. I think a lot of guys did that. And, uh, you know, this razor, it was your basic uh, twist to open, double edge safety razor. It was it had some good advertising, you know. I mean, nobody, I hadn't seen double edge safety razors used since, you know, probably the last of them back in the 70s when my dad was still shaving with him, maybe in the early 70s, maybe late 60s. But uh, I had never used one, you know, maybe from time to time when I was really young, uh, picking up my dad's razor and trying to shave with it. But by the time I got into shaving, the uh, disposables, the big disposables were out. And uh, that's what I ended up going to. But this uh, MicroTouch 1, double-edged safety razor was cheap. It was 20 bucks. Uh, the blades were very cheap. And that was what really what prompted me was that the cost of the, uh, the multi-blade razors that Gillette was putting out for like, uh, you know, some of their razors were very expensive. You get five cartridges for 17, $18. It was ridiculous. They'd last a week and you had to put another one in. So I went to this thing and, uh, yeah, you know, it wasn't the greatest experience, but uh, it certainly was less expensive, and I did it. And that, that was one of the first things that got me started. But then I moved on, and uh, I moved on as a result of uh, watching some YouTube videos by some famous YouTubers that have shaving channels. And uh, the next razor I picked up uh, was a British-made razor called the Edwin Jagger DE89. Now, this, to me, was like a, a big step up from the Micro Touch One. It cost me about twice as much money. Uh, it was about $40. Uh, the, the build on it was much better. It's heavier. The chrome was better. Uh, and I even found that the shave was much more comfortable than, than the Micro Touch One. This is not an adjustable razor either. It is just a uh, three-piece razor. You know, the handle comes off. And I'm not going to do this for all of them because it'll, the video will get very time consuming. But a three three piece razor, uh, non adjustable, and uh, I found that it was comfortable and gave me a pretty good shave. And uh, I I used that for a while. And then you think, well, okay, so what more do you? What other razors do you need? You know, well, that's the problem. So then you start looking around and you're watching YouTube's, and you know, next thing you know, I see somebody with a custom handle on a three piece razor. And I find this uh, this uh, maple wood. It's almost like a work of art. This guy made this custom executive razor handle. It's made out of like 150 different pieces of maple wood uh, in the pattern of an American flag. It's uh, stained and uh, it's got an, a lacquer finish on it. Very, very comfortable. And uh, I didn't want to just keep switching back and forth between the DE89 head for this and that. So I bought a cheap a cheap, inexpensive razor head from Maggard Razors in Canada. And, uh, you know, I put that on this uh, handle that I've got. And, wow, all of a sudden now I had I had a couple of razors, you know, and I would all alternate between them. I wouldn't use this one too much anymore, but I was going between the DE89 and this one. And I, and I liked it. 
Yeah, and then the next one I got probably was uh, looking around. I think I ended up picking up one of these Indian Parker variants, which was uh, an adjustable razor. I had always been interested in the adjustable razors. I remember my dad had an adjustable Gillette, uh, like I said, back in the late 60s maybe early 70s, he was still using it. And this Parker variant wasn't adjustable. It was a different type than that Gillette model, though. Uh, adjustable at here, it, you turn this knob to whatever setting you want, it raises the head up and down. Very well built, you know, heavy duty. I think it's stainless steel. And, uh, you know, I found that, that uh, at, a, at a lower setting uh, with a sharp blade, I could get a pretty good shave with this thing. And I kind of like that, you know, and I, I find myself, I found myself using that one more than, more than the other ones at that point. But, you know, as you continue to watch some of the YouTube, and I had some favorite channels, uh, I'll give a shout out to Paul H films. He was, he was one of the first ones that I started watching. The guy does a great job. Uh, you know, we, uh, corresponded frequently over the years and, uh, he, he, he would answer your questions about different razors and products. And he's got a great channel, uh, Briarwood 138 guy from New York, Joe from Queens. Uh, he's got a great channel, entertaining guy mixes his sh shaving videos with, uh, you know, ex uh, other things going different places and stuff. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff. But those guys got me interested in in the in the hobby i'd like to call it a hobby of these different razors you know so the the next one i bought was i went out and i said you know what i want that same one my dad had so i bought this beauty now this thing is a 1960 i don't know i think it's a 62 based on the code on the bottom it's a gillette fat boy it's an adjustable razor and uh, i bought this one from uh, razor emporium uh, I believe they're in Arkansas, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, or, or Phoenix, Arizona, or somewhere like that. I don't know. I'd have to look at the box. But Razor Emporium, they did a great job on this. You know, it's completely restored. They replated everything. They restored it all to factory settings. They clean it. Every, they make every, make sure everything works. They, you know, repainted the little red notch on there and the numbers on the thing. Great razor. Expensive. Uh, I think I paid 200 bucks for this thing. And... Uh, you know, it shaves great. It, you know, it, it's a good shaver. And uh, you would think, okay, well, that's it. How many more do you need, right? No, not me. Next thing I do, I go out and they come out with the Australian one, comes out with this Emperor, the Vikings Blade, the Emperor, a company out of, company out of Australia. Now, this thing is built like a tank. I am not kidding you. It's heavy. You could, you could hit somebody on the head with this and probably knock them out. Um, it's made out of brass. It's multi-tone color. It has an adjustable band at the top, you know, similar in, in function to the, to the old Gillette, but a completely different feel. Very, very heavy. And I tell you what, this wasn't very expensive. I think it was 50 or $60. And I found that this razor, uh, you had to be real, you had to be real careful. Uh, you had to be real careful with a, you put a sharp blade in there like a feather. Uh, I had to use it at low settings and go very slow or I'd find myself getting nicks and cuts. Same thing with the Gillette. The Gillette wasn't anything that I could get up in the morning and just breeze through without paying attention. This one was a little bit little bit easier on me as far as being uh, forgiving if I was making mistakes. But the adjustables sort of got me into uh, you know the idea of, okay, be careful when you're shaving with these things. And then I went into, you know, then you start seeing different things on the internet and you see some of these Chinese like this Wishi. I couldn't pass this Wishi up. This was a black PVD coated, uh, twist to open, non-adjustable razor. And I figured, you know, for traveling or something, I, I travel a lot. Uh, rather than take an expensive razor somewhere with me that I'd be afraid of losing, this thing was like $11. I got this off Amazon for like $11, coated in uh, some type of polyvinyl. But I'll tell you what, this one was a beast. This was a beast. No matter what type of blade I put in and no, no matter how much I took care and, uh, you know, deliberation in terms of how I'm shaving, making sure I don't, I would still cut myself with this thing. This Wishi razor, definitely very, very uh, something you got to be careful of. Then Wishi, I looked at some of the other Wishis. And uh, here's this gunmetal Wishi, which is the same Pretty much the same razor, but it's a gunmetal coating instead of the PVD. 
And I'll tell you what, I found that this one, this gunmetal coated Weishi gave me an excellent shave. I mean, seriously, it, I, I was able to shave pretty, pretty much without any problems, any nicks or cuts or irritation. It, uh, it's a really good razor. I think I paid $15 for this and, uh, I would probably, you know, compare this to being hands down beats any of the other non-adjustables, uh, maybe for the exception of the Edwin Jagger was a little better, but it was a good quality razor for $15 and, uh, it worked pretty good. I then went out, <laughs> you know, like I said, you go on the internet, Oh, look at this. They got a long handled Weishi. Oh, this one's only $12. I have to have that one. Maybe I like the long handle, but you get into this like habit of you, you know, you're buying this stuff. You're thinking you, I'm spending too much time watching razor videos, but, uh, yeah, I got this long handle one and, uh, actually I still got a blade in there. Um, this one shaves pretty good. This one shaves pretty good too. For some reason, the two gunmetal ones really did, did a nice job. The black one, like I said, not too good, but now comes to the one where I got to tell you, I, uh, I would say hands down, this would be my choice. And this is the Mercure 34C, the HD. This razor, again, not, not an adjustable, just a simple three-piece razor. I've got a blade in there because I use this one pretty much every day. And I have to say that hands down, uh, for me, this razor with a feather blade in it, hands down, I've never cut myself with this razor. I've never nicked myself. But hands down, this one beats every other razor. No doubt about it. All right? So I'll be back in a second to show you a closer look at this. Okay, so let's take a look at the, let's take a closer look at the winner, which I think, like I said, is the absolute best of my collection anyway. And it's only my opinion also. Uh, like, like I said in the, in the intro here, if any of you feel the same way about the Mercure, I'd love to know it. Uh, I'd, I'd like to hear your comments either way, but the Mercure, the Mercure razor, I took the blade out, uh, is a, a three, three piece razor in a sense. The head is a two piece. The base plate is affixed to the handle, but then this little, uh, tightening job comes off. It's actually a four piece cause there's a little collar on here that, uh, plays some role in putting it back together. But uh, made in Solingen, Germany. Solingen, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, excellent build. Excellent chrome. Um, you know, I've had this one a while, and I, I use it every day. It's my go-to razor. It's held up very well. It's very solid built. Stainless steel, nice weight to it. Uh, it seems to me that Mercure has perfected the exact angle, for me anyway, the exact angle of the blade in their, in their razor. Uh, it's not an adjustable. So everybody gets the shit, the same angle. But like I said, I use a feather blade and if you use a luxury shaving cream or even, even you can even just use Arco, which is not considered a luxury, but I think Arco shaving cream is a fantastic performer wise. It doesn't have the greatest scent. It's not an offensive scent, but it's not the greatest scent. And, uh, but performance wise, Arco, it, Arco competes with the rest of them, but you put a feather blade in here with a good quality shaving cream. And I'll tell you what, I challenge someone to get a smoother shave with anything. And that's the way I feel about it. McCour, uh, and they've been around a long time too. Uh, McCour has been around probably, I think almost as long as Gillette has. And, uh, you know, they've got their logo on the bottom and, uh, the razor was about, I think it was $35. And not a, not a bad, not a bad deal. And I'll tell you what, I, I'm probably not going to buy another razor. I have enough now, but if I would have bought this McCour early on, like maybe my first razor, uh, I don't, I don't think I would have gone past maybe another one or two razors before I realized, Hey, this is, this is the one I don't, I don't need any other ones. Cause this one, like I said, you can, you can do it every day with no blood and no, no irritation and you can get a really smooth shave with it. So that's my that's my pick. Let me know what you think. Appreciate you watching the video, guys. Thanks.